Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the big elephant in the room. We're talking about China today, one of my favorite subjects. But I know some people out there don't like me talking about China, but it is, it is the big elephant in the room today. And we're, we're getting a lot of news over here through Google News. A lot of um, news from like different sites is popping up on there about China, the things that they're doing, flying into um, Taiwan's airspace, and also flying into Philippine airspace, I might add. So I want to throw that out there because there was a, um, a drone that flew over the Philippines and it was in the news. And then they, they scrambled two jets, I talked about this a while back, and then it flew out over the ocean. So they're, they're guessing that it was probably China that did that. But also, there's been a lot of weird things going on all throughout here with different, like a submarine just ran into something, they don't know what it is. Um, Things like that. There's been a lot of weird things going on. And, and it was the USS Connecticut, I believe it was. And with that said, who knows what's going on? But I mean, Japan's ready to go to war. Australia's getting ready for anything that happens. And I, I think Australia's kind of hoping that this will start in the future sometime. But I don't think they're going to wait till the future. I think there's, a, there's some sort of celebration coming up between... I believe this month in December, okay, that's supposed to be going on. And China wants to be reunited with Taiwan 100% by Christmas. So that's part of what's going on right now over here. And in the US, I know you guys aren't hearing a lot about this stuff, and I'm not sure why, because a lot of people that I talk to say, Steve, we don't see that much in the news about China. I mean, over here to us, if you, if you follow the news, it almost seems like you're on, we're on the brink of war over here. Now, I talked with a couple of people the other day, and they said they're leaving. They're leaving the Philippines. They said they're worried about China right now. And that kind of concerned me when they said that. I have another guy that's leaving. He's, he's leaving because of the, um, the, the pandemic, and he doesn't like the way it's getting handled over here. I mean, for me here, I see things changing kind of for the, be for the better. Although we see some restaurants closing down, things like that, I think it's just the end of the line for those. They're almost, they're either bankrupt or broke or whatever, and they just have to close down. Even if the economy is getting better, they just reach the tail end of their survival and can't go on any further. Now, when I was walking through BGC yesterday, I noticed that a lot of the stores were either closed or partially open. The restaurants were dead. There was nobody walking around there, very few people. You know, you, could, you, you can go onto my um, Facebook and you can see that and you can see all the, um, you know, the, the stores that are empty there. It's incredible, it's just incredible. I'm gonna try to get that, that video uploaded if I can get the music sounds out of there or whatever. I'm gonna try to upload that. I have a kid that's gonna work on it for me to try to fix that for me so we can try to show that video. It's a beautiful video, by the way. But anyway, I wanna talk a little bit about that because that's important. If you have stores that are empty, eventually they're going to close down. And we see stores, and these are high-end stores too, by the way, in BGC. And in the Philippines right now, everybody's broke. Everybody's watching their wallet. Everybody. Because most of the people that work in these restaurants aren't getting a full, a full week's worth of work. They're getting half of what they were before because the restaurants are kind of empty in a lot of places still. Like BGC, because people can't afford to go to go eat out there because it's very expensive to eat there. So they go to the cheaper places like McDonald's, Taco Bell. Now yesterday, we went to Taco Bell in the afternoon. Now Taco Bell was pretty much, eh, probably about three quarters capacity, maybe half capacity, okay? But keep in mind, they're at 10% capacity that they're allowed to have. So they're really at 5% capacity in reality, if you catch my drift. So that tells you that they're not doing that well either. They had three employees sitting there, okay? One was sitting down, he was sleeping on a table. One was making the food and the other one was running the register. Now, I would take the one that was sleeping probably cleans the place or something, but, you know, as we were walking through, I was looking at these really high-end restaurants. They had one cook, one waitress, and the waitress was the one that was doing the seating and stuff like that too, and cleaning the tables and wiping everything down. So, I mean, these places are running really, really slow. So they need to open up here. But if with this China thing going on, who knows what the heck's gonna happen? You know what I mean? There's, there's so much 
concern and worry in the world. And for us expats right now, there is a lot of worry. We've talked about this a lot in the past. And what I want to say is this, is that if China starts up, if China starts up with Taiwan, you can be guaranteed, you can guarantee that Japan, Australia, the Philippines, and the United States is all going to be involved in it. And I don't think China is going to hold back any punches. If they can send a rocket or a missile into a country, it might not be a nuclear missile or something like that, but this is what I'm concerned about. And, and who knows whether it's going to be true, or whether, whether this happens or not. But I don't think that China is just going to sit idly by because they're becoming, we woke up the sleeping dragon basically by getting involved in this. And, and with good reason, with good reason too. But, the, but now the dragon's kind of mad that we're moving into their space and, and he's saying, hey, we're not gonna put up with that, you know, because they think everything is theirs. For whatever reason, now, like they get the Spratleys and all these other islands, the, the Paracel Islands and a few other places that they call theirs, you know, and the, U, the US is bringing in submarines in here. We just brought in a ton of troops now, some reports say it was 7,000. One of the reports said it was 30,000 troops. I think we're bringing in more than that behind the scenes, but I'm not sure, you know, because I get this feeling like we're bringing in like a ton of people. I think up in Taiwan, we might have some troops up there already that we don't know about. We've already got some special forces troops up there training people. Now, my feeling is I wouldn't be surprised if we start docking ships there. You know, and just say, tell China, hey, look at us. We're sitting right here on your doorstep right now, and we're going to stay here. And I think at some point that might happen. If we go to war or something like that, we'll probably start docking ships there. We'll start pulling into their port. We'll probably start pulling into their ports or whatever just to show China who's the boss. And I think we need to kind of do that. We need to kind of step up our game as, you know, over here a little bit because we can't let China say, hey, you can't go through the South China Sea anymore unless you tell us. You know, come on. South China Sea is a mighty big area. They've, out, they've pretty, pretty much fished out every area over here. So they're going to other countries and stealing all their fish now. They're going over to the Galapagos Islands. They're going down to the Falklands. They're going off of all these different coasts and just fishing them out like crazy. And then to top it off, the other day, we, we had this thing going on. I guess it was up in Canada. And they didn't say who, who found out about it. I guess it was a Chinese submarine coming down off the coast of uh, New Finland and, and that area. I guess it was coming down to the United States and it was coming down through the polar caps, I guess. So, I mean, there's a lot of scary stuff. I mean, let's face it, the, ele the, the, the elephant in the room is getting bigger. It's getting a lot bigger, you know, and with some of the expats that I talked to the other day saying they're leaving, I was like, wow, you know, that's different because I haven't heard this in a while. I've heard a few people say it, but all of a sudden I had like three in a row that had told me that they were leaving. And that kind of says a lot. I'm not afraid to stay here. I, I think with five bases here that the U.S. has and stuff like that, I think that we're all set. Um, could, could the war break out here too? If, if, if it breaks out, hell yeah, it could. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. You know why? Because I think if this war breaks out, it's not, it's, it, it's not gonna just be in this area. I think it's also gonna be brought to the US coastline. Probably California and maybe even like the East Coast too. I mean, if they got submarines off our coast, you can be guaranteed, all you have to do is fire a couple missiles in there and boom, and that's, that starts it all. You know, it starts something big. So we gotta start being a little bit more concerned because you know, being back in the US is not gonna be safe either, I don't think. Just like the Philippines wouldn't be safe. I don't think there's gonna to be too many safe places. Unless you go to Europe or you find some places like that, you're not gonna be that safe. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now and I've been watching it and, and be, it's kind of crazy actually. It's kind of scary. And I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, we got, we got inflation over here going on. Um, people out of work, I guess they said something like 40 something percent of the, of the people over here are hungry. Um, every day when they go to sleep. 40-something percent of Filipinos go to bed hungry every day. So that'll tell you how bad it is over here. 40%. That was on the Inquirer News, I believe, over here that stated that. And they, they said with the rampant um, inflation over here, people are hurting, rampant unemployment, all that stuff. So we got a lot to worry about over here. You know, because and if, if we go to war with, with the economy the way it is, it's kind of like 
in a bad spot, you know? So we'll see what happens, guys. You know, just, this is, it's kind of a funny spot to be in. But I'd like to get you guys' thoughts on this and see what you guys think about this. I know a lot of you guys are saying, nah, China will never, never do anything. No, I think China's gonna do something. I think China's gonna do something. You don't, you don't do these practice runs and stuff like that for nothing. You don't. You know, it, it, it's, it, these things that China, the Chinese are doing right now, that's not just for fun. It's not just for fun. I mean, you have to be pretty naive to think that. But anyway, guys, God bless. Take care. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks, guys.